Hi guys, it's Matt from Max on UK here, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at creating an underwater scene and all of the rippling light effects that go with it without the need for caustics. So if you've got some form of scene that you want to give this sort of wonderful underwater effect to, then I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so I'm just going to minimise that. So the first thing that we need is some form of underground, underwater ground, and to do that I'm going to use a landscape object. Okay, so I'm just going to create myself one of those. Obviously it's a bit diddy at the moment, um, and so I'm going to whack up the size a bit, say around 5,000, say 200 high and 5,000 across. Okay, it doesn't really give me a lot of detail in the, at the moment, so I'm just going to turn off borders at sea level. Okay, and because of the size of this, I'm going to need to increase the amount of segments that there are in this, so say by 500 by 500, okay, and then you can see that we've got these sort of rough furrows that you can create, and I can increase that, and the fine furrows will give you the amount of sort of other detail. So depending on sort of like the look that you want for your underwater scene, okay, you can sort of vary between that. And then I'm going to position the camera roughly at the sort of farthest corner so that we get a nice view of the underwater scene. Okay, and the next thing I need to add is some form of environment. So up here, I'm going to add an environment object. And this environment object is going to give me that nice sort of deep blue sort of distance fog, as it were. So I'm going to enable fog there, and you can see that it makes it white by default, which is not the colour that I'm going to want. So I'm going to choose a nice sort of deep blue that will give me that colour. And then when it comes to the distance, 10,000 is a bit too far. You can see that you can still see the edges. I want to be able to just sort of phase out the edge of that a little bit more. So as I know the square is only 5,000 by 5,000, if I do that, Okay, you can see that it starts to fade out there. So maybe if I just increase that somewhere in between. There we go. Okay, and that gives that nice sort of effect. And now I'm going to need to create myself a light. So the light source that we're going to use is just a standard light. And this is what we're going to use to create this rippling effect. So using a standard light, I'm going to change it from an omni to an area, and that will give me an area to sort of produce light from. I'm just going to rotate that down just so it's facing the ground. And then under the light settings, we have noise. Okay, and it's the noise that we're going to use to produce that rippling look. At the moment, it's set to none, so I'm going to change it from none to illumination. Okay, and that will produce illuminated noise along the ground. So if I just render that, you can see that there is some form of, sort of rippling in there that's not just being created by the, uh, the look of the ground. So soft turbulence is okay, but the best turbulence I find to use is hard turbulence. Okay, and that kind of gives you this interesting look here. But in a way, it's the wrong way round. So we're gonna have to do some interesting things with the settings. So we need to make sure it's brighter. So I'm gonna whack the brightness right up, okay? So I'm gonna put that at, say, roughly 100. But now, as you see, it washes that color out completely. So if you decrease the contrast, okay, and if you keep going, you can see that all of a sudden we get these little ripply lines. And I'm gonna settle it about 200. This is what's going to give that really interesting effect. So if I just render that quickly, you can see that we get these white wavy lines working all the way across. Now, a few more settings that I'm gonna change. Um, the fewer the octaves that you have, that sort of smoother that line gets. So depending the sort of smoothness and the depth that you want to fake your light with will depend on how you can adjust that. 
and increasing the contrast, or sorry, decreasing the contrast will sharpen those lines and increase the amount of dark that there is between them. So you get these really tight highlights. Um, I'm going to increase that maybe just to two, maybe or three, and you can see that it starts to fade out a little bit too much. So just increasing that contrast again um, to there will give us a sort of nice sense of rippling here. Now the colour of it is currently white, so I'm going to need to adjust that a little bit. So going back to the light colour, I'm going to make it sort of a lightish blue. Okay, and that should give us these sort of ripples that we've got going on here. I'm just going to decrease the uh, colour of that environment. So I'm just going to make that much darker, so it's a more deep blue. And then if we render, there we go, we can see that we've got this nice rippling effect under the ground. So you can increase the brightness of your light if you want, as long as you still keep it blue. Okay, so maybe the blue, but maybe increase the intensity so that it gives you these nice highlights. There we go. So I want a little bit of a texture to the ground just to make it a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to create myself a new texture. Okay, and then under the color channel, I'm going to create a layer because I'm going to use a couple of things that are going to create a more realistic looking ground. But again, I'm mainly focusing on the light effect here, so the textures for the ground are just to kind of add effect. So adding a layer and double click in there. And the first thing I'm going to add is a Fresnel. OK, and this is going to give me some more color. So I'm going to choose a light sort of color there, and then I'm going to choose a sort of maybe a darkish brown for the other side. OK, just sweep that down a bit so you can see we've got that nice gradient. And then going back up to the shader, I'm going to add myself a noise filter. OK, and the noise I'm going to look in and the noise I'm going to choose is one with a lot of sort of data in it, and that's the FBM. I find it gives a nice look. OK, and I am going to use a multiply over the top. OK, I'm going to turn off the specular, I think, at this point. It's not really going to give us much. Um, and then under the bump channel, because I want to give us that little bit more emphasis on the sort of the graininess of the sound, I'm also going to produce a noise. And equally, I'm going to use the FBM again. OK, and then I'm just going to drag and drop this onto my ground, and then I'm going to render. And it just gives us that interesting underground speckliness. I think perhaps that might be a bit much. So with the scale of this, if I was to change it, OK, just increase the scale so it's not quite so small on the ground. And the same maybe with the colour under there as well. So it doesn't have to match. It just gives you and it just gives you that little bit more detail without being too much. OK. So now if I play, OK, we can't actually see anything because we'll need to render out before we can see the effect that this light is having. So I'm just going to create myself a little preview. OK, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than that, say 1024. 30 frames a second is fine. And then I shall click OK. OK, and we should just wait until it's done. OK, there we go. So that took a couple of minutes. And now if I press play, you can see we've kind of got this really nice sort of flowing underwater eeriness. Maybe if you wanted to increase the speed of that. OK, we'll have to go back into its settings. So if we go into the light and we go into the noise settings, then what we're going to do is we're going to increase the velocity. OK, so if I just up that, say, about to 50 percent, and then if I create another preview render. OK, so there we can see that it moves a little bit faster. If I just go back to my original one, you can see that it's a little bit slower than it was. 
um, or rather it was slower before, and it's much sort of more active on the one below. Okay, well, that was a very quick tutorial there. I hope it's given you some useful information on sort of creating realistic and fake ref um, refractions, as it were, without the need for creating complicated caustics. Okay, see you next time.